in the last video we completed how different participants saw the civil disobedience movement and the limitations of civil disobedience movement of your history chapter 3 nationalism in india today let's try to understand the last topic of this chapter that is the sense of collective belonging nationalism is a sense of national consciousness among the people developed when people started to realize that their nation is a sovereign and no outside forces should come and control the country. Nationalism is spread when people find unity among themselves. In India also, in spite of various communities and various languages spoken, the idea of nationalism was spread among the people. In this topic, we will be trying to understand that how the idea of nationalism was developed, what were the factors responsible for the development of nationalism in India. There were mainly two factors which helps in the spread of nationalism. The first factor was the long history of struggle, the common experience of united struggle against the British. The second reason was the various cultural processes. India was having various communities, so we, are, we were having various cultural processes. So these two factors, the united struggle against the British and the cultural processes were helping in the spread of nationalism in India. We have history, folk songs and folk tales, icons and symbols that we are going to discuss here. So in the 20th century, the identity of India came to be known when Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay created the Bharat Mata image. Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay also wrote the famous hymn Bande Mataram in the 1870s and this hymn became very famous. Later on when he wrote his novel Ananmat, he included this hymn Bande Mataram in his novel Ananmat. And during the time of Swadeshi movement also, Swadeshi movement was mainly confined in Bengal, the use of Indian goods and boycotting of British made goods. So during the time of Swadeshi movement also, this song Bande Mataram was widely sung. So this song became very famous. Now, after Bangim Chandra, Chattopadhyay, another artist, Abhanindranath Tagore, he painted his famous Bharat Mata image. This Bharat Mata image became very famous because it was an ascetic mother, mother figure, composed, calm, divine and spiritual. After him, in subsequent years, many artists started painting in different forms of Bharat Mata. So through these images of Bharat Mata, the identity of India came to be known and people started showing devotion to the mother figure, thus helping in the spread of nationalism in India. Now this is the first factor. The second factor let's discuss that is in the late 19th century, our nationalist leader, they went from village to village and started collecting folk tales and folk songs, ballads and all, because they started believing that these folk tales and folk songs were our traditional culture and these were destroyed or damaged by outsiders when India was colonized. They believed that only by preserving our culture, unity could be found in India and identity, identity of India could be known, thus helping in the spread of nationalism. Ravindranath Tagore also in Bengal collected these nursery rhymes and ballads and he also started this folk revival movement. In South India also, that is in Madras, Natesha Sastri, he collected Tamil folk tales and published in four volumes by the name The Folklore of Southern India. Thus, this cultural, these cultures, traditional cultures, folk soul, folk song, folk tales, and these ballads, all these things were helping in binding the people together, thus helping in the spreading of nationalism in India. 
Now next factor was the use of symbols and icon. Now during the time of Swadeshi movement, Swadeshi flag were used. This, this was the Swadeshi flag. It is having three colors, red, green and yellow. And at the top we can see eight lotuses here. These eight lotuses represents the eight provinces of British. And a crescent shaped moon represents the Hindus and the Muslim. Gandhiji also designed a Swaraj flag. See, this is also made up of three colors, red, green and white, white in the middle. And we can see this spinning wheel, which represents Gandhian ideal of self-help. So when people used this flag during marches, it, gives, it gave a symbol of defiance, thus helping in binding the people together and bringing the nationalist sentiments among the people. Now, next we have by the end of 19th century, our nationalist leaders realized that India was having a very glorious past. Our past achievement, there were times when our this history, our this one, there was florist men in our history, in art and architecture, science and mathematics, trade, etc. This glorious past became declined when India was colonized and India was subdued under the British rule. So they started, our nationalist leaders started reinterpreting our history. They started rewriting again in order to let the masses know. So they also urged the readers to, after reading what they had written, they also urged the reader to find pride in our India's past achievement and also to fight against the British rule. So reinterpretation of history or past history also helped in spreading nationalism in India. Now, all these things which were tried by our leaders in order to bring the people nationalist sentiment were having some problems also. When reinterpretation of anything was done, it was, it was taken out from Hindus. And when icons or images or anything like that was met, it was taken out from Hindu iconography. So India was having various communities. Naturally, the other communities felt left out. But so this is the end of your last topic, the sense of collective belonging.